Hello, my name is Adam Harwood and I'll be talking about glacial depositional environments. If you think of glaciers, you may think of this, 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 or even this. While all glaciers are similar in some way, all glaciers have been divided into different types. But before we go over the different types of glaciers and subcategories, let us first go over what a glacier is and how they form. Firstly, a glacier is a body of ice that moves under its own weight. From the amount of glacial ice that has piled on it over time, but how does this glacial ice even get there? You probably guessed it, but glacial ice originates from snow. Simply put, Glaciers form when snow accumulation exceeds the summer melt or ablation zone. Once snow accumulations survive a summer melt period, snow eventually becomes packed into a fern, which is the medium between snow and glacial ice. Then once enough weight is put on top of the fern, after multiple times of snow surviving the summer yearly, it becomes so packed that all air bubbles are pushed out of the fern and glacial ice is formed. Eventually, once there's enough glacial ice, the glacier will begin to flow outwards and downwards under the own pressure of its weight. In the beginning, this glacier started all the way back here, 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 or even hundreds of kilometers that are not included in this picture. When it comes to the movement of glaciers, they can move based on two similar principles of high pressure and geothermal heat called basal sliding and eternal plastic flow. Basal sliding is the process of a glacier sliding downwards due to meltwater acting as a lubricant over the bedrock bed. This happens because the meltwater moves other sediments below the glacier and it becomes a much smoother surface for glaciers to move on rather than bedrock. Internal plastic flow or internal deformation is the process of ice becoming deformed at the depths of the glacier. The high pressures that the glacier exerts on the bottom of the ice deforms the ice into a more liquid property and then ice slides over it. This allows the glacier to slowly move because of this. Not only do glaciers move outward, but they can also retreat. Glacial retreat is when the terminus or end of the glacier does not reach the same point it previously did. This can be caused by a lack of snow accumulating each year or a larger ablation zone, letting the glacier melt more over time. This photo showing a process report on a glacier in India shows a huge amount of glacial retreat. Not only is the glacier basically gone, we can see the till and tillite of it very clearly. Now that we know how glaciers form and how they move, let's talk about how they move rocks and sediments and deposit them. Since glaciers are huge massive bodies of ice moving slowly, they tend to break up any rock in their way including bedrock. It usually happens at the bottom of the glacier. This process is called abrasion. As the rocks and sediment are being broken up, they are also being carried away by the glacier. Glaciers then deposit these rocks into different deposits called tills, tillite or diamictite, and moraines. Tills are unsorted sediments and rocks directly deposited by the ice. Tillites or diamictites are formed from the subsequent mixing and cementing of other sediments from a glacial till. The sediments are unsorted and can be any size including boulders. Next we have moraines. Moraines are just accumulations of till exposed on or next to glaciers. Lateral moraines are glacial tills on the ridges or sides of glaciers. Medial moraines are tills in between glaciers, like shown here.
terminal moraines or end moraines are tills at the end of the glacier or even its furthest point the glacier ever moved. This end moraine is fairly new. Though these features can be seen from satellites and photographers, until the glacier melts, grooves, flutes, and linear striations are hidden within the glacier itself. Grooves are land features that affect bedrock and other underlying terrain in glaciers. Grooves themselves are caused by boulders and rocks and ice being dragged along the bedrock base while the glacier is moving these sometimes linear striations in the bedrock. Flutes are elongated moraines that are streamlined ridges of sediment stretched out by glacial movements. Sediments, rocks, and boulders are bound to not always be from the place that they were deposited, such as this image right here and this other image. These large boulders were taken from their home origin and deposited hundreds of kilometers away when the glacier melts or retreats. This is called glacial erratics. Glacial erratics refers to any pebble-sized to boulder-sized rock transported to an uncommon environment which they are not suited to be usually found in. Glacial erratics is studied by scientists to understand the paths of ancient glaciers. Above all the facts stated beforehand, glaciers are divided into two categories known as alpine glaciers and continental glaciers. Alpine glaciers are bound by mountainous regions or valleys. These include glaciers such as polythermal glaciers, temperate glaciers, cirque glaciers, valley glaciers, Piedmont glaciers, and tidewater glaciers. Continental glaciers are continuous bodies of ice that are much larger than alpine glaciers. Continental glaciers include cold base glaciers, ice sheets, and ice caps. Our first alpine glacier we'll start with is a polythermal glacier. These glaciers are usually cold based, but will eventually accumulate enough weight to put enough pressure to enact basal sliding. This happens because of snow and ice accumulations near the top of the glacier is weighing down enough pressure that the pressure melting point of the ice decreases as the pressure increases. When this happens, a glacial surge can occur whereas the body of ice starts to move rapidly down the slope. When the glacier is moving down rapidly, any material can be eroded away, including bedrock. The glacier halts its sliding when pressure is not melting the glaciers any longer. A glacial surge can take anywhere from months to years. Secondly, we have temperate glaciers. These glaciers are located in mountainous regions and lower latitudes than polythermal glaciers. The ice is above the pressure melting point and it is easily able to slide over bedrock. Glacial movement is an example of erosional mechanisms that are associated with temperate glaciers and polythermal glaciers, causing detritus or debris to be accumulated through the glacier like glacial abrasion. The movement in temperate glaciers usually outwash their detritus into downstream rivers. Next we have cirque glaciers. Cirque glaciers are formed in small protected bowl-like amphitheaters on mountainsides called cirques. These glaciers are formed when valley glaciers retreat so much that they become a cirque glacier or they are formed when mountainous avalanches or snow and ice accumulations are cornered off in this bowl-like terrain. If a cirque glacier is able to enact glacial advance far enough, it may be considered a valley glacier in the long run. The next type of glacier is called a valley glacier. A valley glacier is found in major mountain ranges in moderate and high latitudes. Valley glaciers 
or confined within the sides of the valley it is in it. Also, valley glaciers can be fed by larger glaciers. Valley glaciers can also be formed when a cirque glacier creates a far enough glacial advance. Valley glaciers are usually very long in distance and can sometimes reach the sea if they are that large. Once a glacier hits the sea, it is considered a tidewater glacier. Tidewater glaciers are polythermal, temperate, or valley glaciers that flow far enough to hit the sea. Tidewater glaciers contain large amounts of supraglacial and basal debris. Tidewater glaciers are glaciers that calve, and calving refers to the breakoff of glaciers that turn into icebergs. Finally, our last alpine glacier is a Piedmont glacier. These glaciers can be formed when elevated valley glaciers pour out into flat plains as a large body of ice that can be measured as hundreds of meters thick. Our first continental glacier subcategory are cold base glaciers. These glaciers move entirely from plastic flow with the upper layers of the ice body covering lower parts. When considering the effects of erosion and weathering, cold base glaciers are less important to these mechanisms because cold base glaciers move so little or none at all. Secondly, we have ice sheets. Ice sheets only occur in Antarctica and Greenland. These blankets of ice span across more than 50,000 square kilometers and Antarctica and Greenland make up 99% of all freshwater ice on Earth. Ice sheets are very important for scientists to keep track of. If all of the ice were to melt in an instant, then the sea level would rise about 60 meters, which is about 200 feet, swallowing up any coastal city in the U.S. and around the world. Lastly, we have ice caps. Ice caps are basically the same thing as ice sheets, but they are less than 50,000 square kilometers and blanket over large mountains. All of the glaciers I have shown before you create geological landforms. Glacial landforms are created when glaciers move, grow, or shrink. Some glacier landforms include U-shaped valleys, which are carved through mountainous regions from valley glaciers, Cirques, which are formed from the weight of a sitting cirque glacier. Nun attacks, which are formed when multiple glaciers move around or through a large mountainous region. Erites, which are sharp mountain ridges that cut off adjacent glaciers from flowing into each other. Horns, which are large mountaintop peaks that have been eroded by at least three glaciers on three different sides. And icebergs. Icebergs are created when tidewater glaciers extend over the sea. These icebergs do not contain seawater ice, which contains only aeolian sediment. These tidewater glaciers are no longer supported by land anymore and will tend to crack and break up into icebergs. These icebergs not just contain ice, but they also contain dropstones. Dropstones are sediment-sized grains to large boulders that are frozen and melt out of icebergs. They fall into the marine ocean. Dropstones are usually indicators of ancient global glacial weather environments. Overall, glaciers are retreating as we speak. For the last 100 years, with a few exceptions, glaciers are retreating at an unprecedented rate that is due to human activity. In fact, several ice caps and ice shelves have disappeared from the face of our planet. Lastly, we are to blame for causing global warming. Human activity has increased the amount of greenhouse gases that store up energy from the sun in our atmosphere which are slowly melting these glaciers. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased minimally by 40% within the last 50 years. It is important to recognize 
that our glaciers are retreating because in due time, the sea level will rise and coastal environments will be destroyed because of it. Thanks for watching.